All right, go, Pokeball! Yes, gotcha! Now that I've caught this Mimikyu, I can finally see what's under its costume. This is so exciting. Here we go. Oh my god. It's hideous. What is going on guys, this is Dobbs here, bringing you another Pokemon video. And in this video, I'm going to go over 10 of the biggest mysteries in Pokemon. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and without further ado, let's get started. Starting off this list, we have the Mysterious Lass. Now probably one of the most memorable things when it comes to Pokemon, is the original intro to the anime. But something very strange happens near the end of the nostalgic song. Something that most people probably didn't even think twice about. Here, check it out. See if you notice it. Did you see it? After showing Charizard, Blastoise, Venusaur, and then Ash, Pikachu jumps under a very mysterious girl that we never seen before in the anime. So it makes you wonder, who on earth is this cool girl? And what makes her so special to be followed up by the original starters and then Ash? Well, funny enough, to the Japanese Pokemon goer, this wouldn't be a mystery at all, because the Japanese dub to the original Pokemon theme song is actually different from the English dub. In the English dub, the singer says, Gotta catch them all, it hearts so true. But in the Japanese dub, the singer instead says, I'll go through the flames, floods, weeds, forests, soil, clouds, and under a girl's skirt. And there you have it. For the sake of the song's humor, a random blast with no significance was added to just scream when Pikachu flies under her skirt. Not so mysterious after all. But this is only number 10. Haunting you at number 9, we have Ghost Pokemon. Now something I find very mysterious in the Pokemon world is the role of Ghost Pokemon. I tend to question myself on what happens to Pokemon who die in battle or even of old age. Do they turn into a Ghost Pokemon? Or does something else happen? Well, it seems that the story behind Ghost Pokemon is much more darker than one may think. As we travel to new regions of the Pokemon world, we discover different Pokedex adaptations for the all the known Pokemon. And while most of them state similar descriptions, some of the entries bring a whole new perspective to the Pokemon. Like Gengar for an example. In Pokemon Moon, it states that Gengar was once a human, but after death it turned into what it is today. Now this adds to a very recurring pattern to what we see with Ghost Pokemon in the games. So far we've found that Phantom, Spirit Tomb, Yamask, Frostlass, Cofregrigus, Kadabra, and now Gengar were once all human. And if you notice, 6 out of the 7 Pokemon with this chilling background are Ghost type. So it makes you wonder, are Ghost Pokemon just reincarnated spirits of humans? Are humans just Pokemon with enhanced brains with no power? Who knows, but in my opinion, it doesn't really make sense for a human to turn into a Pokemon unless we ourselves are Pokemon. It's a very haunted mystery, but it's definitely a possibility. Closing in at number 8, we have Brock from the anime. Now you probably already know the mystery behind Brock with him never opening his eyes, but I doubt you've heard some of the surrounding theories about why that is. The most generic theory that floats around is that Brock was designed to look rock hard. His squinted eyes with the crossed arms add to the severeness to his design. This theory also states that Game Freak gave Brock this hardcore design because they wanted to give the player a sense of accomplishment for clearing their first gym battle. But what if I told you there's a deeper reason on why Brock never opens his eyes? What if I told you he's actually a Greek mythologic monster? Well, enter the Medusa theory, a creature with a daunting power of turning people into stone after making eye contact. Hence, Brock being a Rock-type Pokemon trainer, this theory states that he is cursed with the mystic eyes of the Gorgon, which is turning people into stone upon making eye contact. This theory also leads to why Brock became a Rock-type Pokemon trainer, because he can't turn stone into stone. But it's highly unlikely that Brock was based off this Greek mythologic legend, but it's still an interesting theory of what Brock may have been based on. You never know though, maybe he shoots Hyper Beans out of his eyes like Snorlax, so maybe some mysteries are better left unsolved. Attacking at number 7, we have Shadow Mewtwo. Now like we all know, Shadow Pokemon debuted in Pokemon Coliseum as Pokemon who had their hearts artificially purified with evil. These Shadow Pokemon had their emotions removed, turning them into soulless fighting machines. Which is kinda of perfect for Shadow Mewtwo, because Pokemon Tournament revolves around nothing but fighting. But the mystery behind this unique Pokemon is that it never appeared in the Pokemon Coliseum games, which is the origin of Shadow Pokemon. So this brings up an interesting question. Is this Shadow Legendary Pokemon from the same universe as the place where Team Cypher conducted their experiment? Or does Shadow Mewtwo have its own origin story? 
Well, after a little research, I found out that Poké Tournament takes place in a region called the Ferrum region. And if you translate Ferrum from Latin to English, it translates into the word iron. Which could be hard evidence that Poké Tournament takes place in the same continent as Pokémon Coliseum. And the reason why that is, is because the cities in the Pokémon Coliseum games are mainly named after types of metal. Not to mention that the whole region Pokémon Coliseum takes place in is called the Ore region. So Shadow Mewtwo could have been created by Team Cypher. But it's just a theory though, and maybe just coincidental. But at the same time, it could be a little hint to a new Pokemon Coliseum game in the near future, which would be freaking awesome. Glitching its way at number 6, we have Missingo. Now of course, everyone knows by now the mystery behind Missingo, so the glitch Pokemon itself isn't so mysterious to the average Pokemon goer. But after further researching into this infamous glitch Pokemon, I came across a very compelling theory created by Forsythia Lux. Now this theory begins with Forsythia unscrambling the sprites of the original Pokemon Green and Yellow Missing Nose, and the results look shockingly familiar. At first glance, these unscrambled Missing Nose look exactly like the strange souvenir found in Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Commonly known as Tiki Mugs, these Hawaiian totems originated from Polynesian ancestry, which is also the same heritage of the Hawaiian people. Now in Hawaiian folklore, one of the most famous myths lies with the legend of the Night Marchers. These Night Marchers are ghosts of ancient Hawaiian warriors that roam across the battlefield they formerly fought in. Now you're probably asking yourself, how does this even relate to Missing No? Well, Forsythia believes that a Polynesian island was supposed to be included in Pokemon Red and Blue east of Cinnabar Island. But after further development, Nintendo scrapped the idea because at the time, they were afraid of creating Pokemon based on real world cultural figures. On top of that, the different forms of Missing No usually appear in ghosts and skeleton sprites at very high levels, which could also be further evidence that these glitched Pokemon were originally Night Marchers. But it's just a theory though, and it really makes you wonder if the islands of Pokemon Sun and Moon were originally inspired by an idea for Pokemon Red and Blue. Who knows? Exploding at number 5, we have the mystery behind the Kalos region. Now ever since the release of Pokemon X and Y, I always wondered why there are such few native Kalos Pokemon in the game. With a staggering 450 Pokemon available to capture, only 72 of them originated from the Kalos region. So I can't help to ask myself why. Why are there such few native Kalos Pokemon that inhabit the area? Well, a Reddit user that goes by the name Hero Linux created a compelling theory that may explain why we don't see many native Kalos Pokemon in the region. As his theory goes, 3,000 years before the Great War, Evolto suddenly dies and sucks the life of every living organism around him. Evident by his Pokedex entry, this sudden explosion put Kalos into a fallout state with no Pokemon left to live. After absorbing the life of every Pokemon that surrounded Evolto, Xerneas then came and enriched the fallout area with new Pokemon to inhabit the land. But because of food being very scarce in this nuked region, Xerneas could only revive a small portion of the Pokemon who perished from Evolto's last resort. But the theory doesn't stop there. The reason we see tons of Pokemon from different regions is because of settlers who migrated to Kalos that brought their Pokemon. Kinda mind blowing but it's a great theory for the mystery behind the Kalos region. Shocking you at number 4, we have Ash's Pikachu. Now ever since the beginning of the Pokemon anime, Ash's Pikachu seemed to be a complete powerhouse when it came to battling. Not even fully evolved, this Pikachu went against some of the strongest opponents and managed to still win despite having unlikely odds. But something that was always a mystery to me was the fact that Ash's Pikachu managed to beat Brox's Onyx despite it being a ground type. And just because the water from the sprinklers gave Onyx a disadvantage, it still doesn't answer the question on why Pikachu's Thunderbolt became effective. Well, there's an interesting property about electricity that may be able to explain why Pikachu was able to surpass Onyx ground typing. Now, after being struck by a bolt of lightning while saving Ash from a horde of Spearows, Pikachu obtained power beyond evolutionary level. This newfound power gave Pikachu's electricity insanely high voltage. Now, the funny thing about voltage and electricity is that the higher voltage a bolt of electricity has, the less insulators, like ground, can resist the shock. Once the electricity's voltage is higher than the insulator's breakdown voltage, the insulators stop being insulators and start being conductors. So really, after being struck by that bull of lightning, Ash's Pikachu just became so supercharged that Brox's on his ground typing couldn't resist the attack. No wonder Team Rocket are so eager to catch his Pikachu. Mind blown. Appearing its way at number 3, we have Why Not in the Mirage Island. Now probably one of the biggest mysteries surrounding the Pokemon world is the story behind the Mirage Island. This island only appears under very rare circumstances and is also home to the infamously rare Lychee Berry. But the mystery behind this island isn't so mysterious as the Pokemon who inhabits it. Why not? I've always asked myself why Why Not is the only Pokemon that lives on this mysterious island. Well after researching this, I came across a very interesting story created by AlMeek93. As his story goes, thousands of years ago a tribe of Wynot and Wolbefet ruled an island that was considered to be paradise. 
These psychic Pokemon were very welcoming to outsiders who wanted to rest and experience the island. The only rule they had was that no one could take a berry from the precious lychee plant. That was only for the tribe. As word spread quickly of the Paradisal Island, more and more Pokemon became interested in taking the powerful berry. After time and time again defending the plant from outsiders, the tribe soon banned all Pokemon from visiting the island. Soon Arceus found out about the group of Pokemon worshipping the powerful plant. So in order to stop this, he sent his servant Dialga to destroy the plant and to remind the Pokemon of who their god was. As Dialga arrived, the Psychic Tribe didn't cooperate and decided to attack the legendary Pokemon with a signature move, Destiny Bond. Dialga knowing that he was in trouble, in a last ditch effort, he managed to freeze the island in time so that no traveler would come across it again. Which is kind of an awesome backstory for such a mysterious island that we don't know much about. Flying in at number 2, we have Unknown. Now in my opinion, I think Unknown is the most mysterious Pokemon of them all, and for the longest time I thought Unknown's name was spelled with a K, literally spelling Unknown. But anyways, Unknown is a very unusual Pokemon. Only knowing hidden power, this Pokemon is very weak while alone, but when many come together, they are able to alter reality and create legendary Pokemon out of thin air. Now the mystery behind the small Pokemon is that it's theorized that Arceus used them to create the universe. Stated from Pokemon Diamond, Arceus is described in mythology as a Pokemon who shaped the universe with his 1000 arms. So what if Unknown played the part of Arceus' arms and helped him create the Pokemon universe we all know and love today? And to support this theory, the Azura Flute, which is a flute that allows a player to encounter Arceus in the wild, sounds very similar to what you would hear when encountering a plethora of Unknown. Hopefully in the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes, we get to learn more behind this mystery. But for now, all we can do is wonder. Disguising itself at number 1 for the biggest mystery in Pokemon, we have Mimikyu. Now right when Mimikyu was revealed with its notorious backstory, the internet went crazy for ideas on who Mimikyu might be. And after doing a little research, I came across a very interesting theory created by Ovi where he believes Mimikyu is actually a haunted Pokedoll. Using Binette as an example, its Pokedex entry states that it became a Pokemon over its grudge of being junked, which confirms that inanimate objects can in fact turn into Pokemon. But this is where the theory gets interesting. Stated from the official Pokemon website, the rising popularity of Pikachu style merchandise around 20 years ago is the reason why Mimikyu makes itself look like Pikachu. It's important to note that this statement blames the Pikachu style merchandise and not the actual Pokemon itself. And it's also important to know that Mimikyu is located in the abandoned Megamart store in the Generation 7 games. So it's very well possible that 20 years ago, a flood of Pikachu merchandise hit the stores and as a result, all of the old dolls were neglected. This could also explain the fairy typing of Mimikyu because it could have originated from a Clefairy doll. It's definitely an awesome theory and hopefully sometime in the near future, we get to see who Mimikyu really is. But for now, it remains a mystery. And there you go, 10 of the biggest mysteries in the Pokemon world. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like if you did, I appreciate it a ton, and also if you're enjoying the channel be sure to subscribe. And if you want to follow me on Twitter for fan interactions, video updates, and other cool stuff, follow me Ethan Dobbs. And for the question of the day, what do you think is the biggest mystery in Pokemon? Be sure to let me know down below in the comments, I can't wait to see what you guys have in mind, and I'll see you all next time. See ya.